A. 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 If you didn't see it, Henry Winkler was on the video oh with God. us. So. Oh my gosh. And um, Paula Abdul. And Paula Abdul. Who loved my little selfie camera, by the way. So We Day was in Chicago a couple weeks ago, and we uh, talked about, you know, children making a difference in this world. And so um, Henry Winkler and Paula Abdul was a big part of it, and we were there to interview them. So. I saw that on Facebook. It was amazing. It was what, thank what you. was it like meeting the fans? Uh, he's Amazing. just the nicest guy. Yeah. Just really, really easy to talk to. He was so, great. Yeah. Have you ever met the Fonz? I have not met the Fonz. I'm so <laughs> envious. Well, uh, <laughs> we're here with Sarah, and this weekend I was on Damon Avenue minding my own business when in front of me appeared a vision because all of you guys know I don't know about her minding her own business but okay a vision definitely <laughs> it was a vehicle and outside of the vehicle was a thrift store and I was like what wait this looks like my basement what okay it's a little bit more curated than your basement I would like to think <laughs> it is, it is. I did bring some items from my basement just to get your opinion on but welcome Sarah to the show Thank and you. tell us a little bit about Lost Girls Vintage so Lost Girls Vintage started three years ago and we launched um, in a 1976 RV that we completely gutted and rehabbed ourselves. So when we bought Winnie, is what we like to call our RV, we it had a, um, a bathroom, a toilet, a, a sink, a, a full kitchen, two beds, and Kyla, my business partner, and I just sort of took a hammer to all of it and tore it out. Mm -hmm. And with the help of a contractor, we made it into a little store. And we have traveled cross country. We've gone on 13 road trips. From The furthest wow. place we've gone is LA. Um, and two international trips. Wow. Wow. Yeah, with Winnie? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say, wow. Well, she's a workhorse at Winnie. I know. <laughs> you know, you press the button and she becomes a boat. Yeah, really, really, a really magic school that. bus. <laughs> Um, she's beautiful, Thank by the you. way. And so um, it's my understanding, and I want to hear how you curate what is inside of Winnie and how you were able to build this into Lost Girls Vintage, into a business. Well, both Kyla and I were selling vintage before we started Lost Girls, and we found that we sold things that we really loved. And that ended up being pieces that were really well made, really unique. And so we don't have a specific decade that we sort of stick to. We sell anything from the early 1900s to the 1990s. So things from 96 are considered vintage. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Really? Wow. That, huh? That's how it works 20 years is where it starts? Yep. So every year we're like, all right, 97. <laughs> How is that possible? But uh, I, I get it. But early 1900, which I'm really, con I mean, I'm. How did you find them? Mm -hmm. Well, with the the pieces from the 1900s and older pieces, we tend to buy privately. So the customer or the the person who's selling will reach out to us and tell us that they have pieces that they're collecting, have been collecting, or have had from. Um, great great grandparents um, and so we'll go and we'll look through and see if they fit the aesthetic of the shop and mm, then okay we'll that's so neat sign or buy them that's really cool so what makes your collection is it is it a price point is it you know brand or how does that work I mean it's, how do it's you anything know that we like it's, okay we don't really have if we feel passionate about a piece it'll be a part of our collection okay and allowing that freedom makes our collection really unique. So thankfully, people really like our taste, because <laughs> otherwise we would not have a business. Wow. Um, okay. So we just, whatever both Kyla and I like, or our other employees. It we, was so cute, because you were parked outside of Hot Chocolate, mm -hmm. and Mindy Siegel mm -hmm. was outside shopping and trying on stuff. So I'm you know, trying to talk to you guys, and then I'm trying to talk to Mindy Siegel, and they just wanted to sell and shop, and I'm like, oh my God, you have a hot chocolate. That's so cool. Um, Mindy but, Siegel has been trying to get us a pop-up in front of her restaurant for years. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Wow. She's a huge fan, and we love her. 
now we're just up the street from her. Yeah, so let's talk, so you do have the van that drives mm -hmm. around to different locations and fests, and how is the best way for people to find you? And now the exciting news is you're actually gonna have a space, mm -hmm. not this space, a space which is your own for the summer, or tell us what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so the best way for people to find us is to follow us on Instagram or other social media outlets. Um, we're Lost Girls Vintage on Instagram, and our showroom space is called Summer Camp. So we are yeah. going to be there for summer into early fall. Um, our hashtag is 100 Days of Summer Camp, oh. which we thought was really cute. Um, we're sharing the space with Foxtail and Moss, which is a DIY blog, um, which we really like. And the show, the showroom will be open. The grand opening is June 3rd, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. We'll have cocktails by Pisco, um, and it'll go into the weekend from 12 to 6 Saturday. And I want to go back to the social media, and you're yeah. talking about people following you on yeah. Instagram. So, do you find a huge business coming from the social media end for you guys? Definitely, yeah. I. Oh. Most of our business is built on social media, and that's how people find us, that's how people follow us. Because we're a mobile shop, it's really difficult to locate us. Mm -hmm, right. So you have to follow us in order to know where we're going to that's be. That's amazing. It's like a food truck, right? Exactly. Very right. similar. So, so, cool. so you go to different, like I would imagine, like different um, festivals mm -hmm. and, and events all well, summer let's take, I want to go wow. through yeah. some stuff quickly. We're going to walk over there. I'm going to pull my pants up <laughs> so I don't flash everybody. Um, <laughs> Because you brought some items in, and I have some items that I took from my basement. I know you think it's a basement like anybody else's basement, mm. but my basement's different. Okay. But let's talk a little bit about some of the items that you brought in that you love. So these are pieces from my own collection. I thought I would show the type of vintage that I end up wearing daily. I, um, I am not wearing vintage right now. All of my jewelry is vintage, um, and my purse is always vintage. And then any hints and tips too. So you said you like, you look for things that are well made. Yes. So let's quickly just go through some of the items you have. Okay, so this is a Latin American dress and it is sheer, it is all hand embroidered, which is pretty amazing. I'm um, gonna pull it out. It's a great summer oh, wow. piece. Oh my gosh. Piece. Wow. And um, this is from your own collection. So yeah. does that mean you found it and you don't want to sell it, so you're keeping it? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always asks if we, if we have pieces that we can't part with. It's very, very rare for us to actually find something that we don't want to sell, but there, there are a handful of things that I just... I have a lot like this. I brought a two sweaters oh, yeah. that I have like this. Tell so, us a little bit about these. This one's from the 80s. This is from the 60s. They're very similar. 80s did a lot of things that touched on the 60s and other decades. Um, I got this dress when I was uh, shopping in Miami. Miami has great shopping. So much fun. And I wore that for our one year anniversary. This is my favorite, favorite dress. It's wow. off the shoulder 1960s mini dress. It has pockets. So the thing is, this is a pajama. This, this, was, this is a nightgown. So somebody would wear this to bed. I wear it to the beach. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. And let's see, because these are, what is this? This is a 1970s dress. 70s. When I got it. That's really cute. Yeah. I really, really like it. I got it, it was dead stock, which means that no one has worn it before. So I was the first person to ever wear it. So in the last 40 years, I was the first person. Wow. Which is pretty special. Well, I brought in a lot of stuff, okay. but I don't want to take up a lot of time. But. Um, you know, stuff like this that I could never part with because I just thought it was so cool. Um, you know, how, tell us some hints and tips just while I'm showing some of my items from my closet. Like what, what if people are trying to sell stuff, mm -hmm. uh, what are some hints for people who are trying to sell Definitely items? email us. Um, that's the best way to get in touch. I email us with that. photos and tell us if you're looking to consign or to sell and what price point you're looking to sell at. Because when I'm selling something, I don't want the other person to tell me a price. I want to tell somebody a price. So I expect the same from someone who's trying to sell me these fun jeans with no butt pockets. Right. Just <laughs> again. Um, so that's really helpful. Also, a good tip for buying 
is always bring cash. Cash is king whenever you go shopping. Mm -hmm. And and it's also it also gives you more leverage to negotiate. So if somebody wants a piece and say the price of this dress is forty eight dollars and they and they come up to me and they're like, Oh, I only have forty dollars in cash, would you take that? I would definitely say yes. Um, but the wrong way to do it is point out a flaw in the piece mm. and um. be like, oh, because of this flaw, you should give it to me lower. We know what our garments have and what they are worth according to that, and we do price things accordingly. So that's a good tip, because I always wanted to know, I'm always afraid to negotiate, but you're saying you can negotiate. And there are definitely polite ways to do it, and everyone sort of expects it. Well, this is great, and afterwards you're gonna tell me what this is worth, because I love it. And I can't believe you know the decade, but we wanna thank you so much, yeah, Sarah, from Lost Girls Vintage. You can find them online, find them on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and we can't wait for your pop-up. We'll go out there and do some video. Yeah, so thank you so thank much. You. Take care. And now we have something very exciting. Yes, we do. You know, I, I'm just a little concerned with the 1996. I think my closet is a whole vintage <laughs> closet. But, you know, now we're more into a serious topic that we have. We talked to an author. Her name is Kate Powers um, that wrote this book called My Underpants Rule. And we're going to show you a quick video and discuss a little bit about this. But I love this book. Everyone should really know about this, especially if you're little children, that it empowers them to protect themselves and understand and be a little bit more street smart and understanding what the boundaries are. So here's a video with Kate Powers of My Underpants Rule. Hey, it's Beth and MJ, and we have a very special guest who flew all the way from Australia, I believe. Yes. Welcome. Way. You are Kate. That's right. Tell us your name and, and why we're here, and why am I holding this beautiful, brightly colored book? Well, I'm Kate Power, and this is my book, My Underpants Rule, which is the fun, easy way to teach your kids how to protect their private parts. People don't really realize how vulnerable their kids are. In America, one in five kids are estimated to be sexually assaulted by the time that they're 18. And we're talking about all cultures. It doesn't matter um, your status, your background, how much money you have, it's in all cultures. And when people think about child sexual assault, they usually think about strangers in cars, um, hiding behind the bushes ready to abduct our kids. But actually 90% of all reported cases are done by people that the kids know, people we trust. So our kids are really vulnerable. And then the other horrifying fact is over a third of all cases are done by other kids as well. Oh. So we can't be with them all the time. So the best thing we can do is educate them and tell them what is appropriate and inappropriate and what to do if anything should happen. As you can tell, it's really bright and colorful. Most people think it's actually a superhero book about kids with magical underpants. So it's got the same feel as a normal, fun, everyday storybook. So for parents who find this topic tricky, it's easy for them because of that feel. And kids, when they read it, they actually have a laugh because there's child-friendly humor in there about funny noises and funny names underneath the underpants. So the kid's laughing, they're engaged in the book, and if they're engaged in the book, they're gonna learn, and they learn the underpants rule. And I have to tell you the underpants rule yes, now. Yes, I want to know the <laughs> underpants rule. What's under my pants belongs only to me, and others can't touch there or ask me to see, but say, grown up or doctor, when I'm not healthy, what's under my pants belongs only to me. And if this rule's broken, I can run, kick or scream. Yes, it's really okay if I make a big scene. My underpants rule has been broken, you see. What's under my pants belongs only to me. This book is recommended for three to eight year old, except I have an awesome video of a two year old reading part of the rhyme, saying part of the rhyme, remembering it after two reads. Mm. So it depends on your kid. The most vulnerable age for sexual assault is actually from three to eight, and it's often the onset for long term abuse. So the beautiful thing about the book, it sets up communication between the educator or the parent um, and it builds trust and it makes it just easier to talk about these um, topics so your child will know if something's happened to them oh we've talked about this oh I can talk to you nothing so bad I can talk to you so from an early age it just makes things communication a lot easier congratulations it's really a tough topic but you've tackled it in such a relatable way thank you so much for having me I'm gonna make MJ read it out loud to me and make all the noises <laughs> 
That would be a fun one. We we'll have to get a fart Thank gun. You, <laughs> you should have bought it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. Oh, Thank you. So thank you so much, Kate Power. She came all the way here from Australia I to know. launch her book. You can actually get it from Amazon. But I love that you're able to feel comfortable talking mm -hmm. about this in front of your children. You know, it, it's still distressing for a lot of parents to talk about it. And she mentioned what, um, how many children before eight are actually have gone through this and it, it's, right. it's really horrifying. And a lot of times it's a coach or a close family member, right. um, somebody that your child is constantly in contact with and you have no way of knowing. So that's why the book and you know the double entendre of my underpants rule yeah. you know is so brilliant and she was a former policewoman she's a former policewoman she mentioned that on the video as well and that she had went through a little bit of an experience with this with her daughter and it was her way to come up with this and make it comfortable for everybody right. because not all parents are out there who's find it easy to have conversation with their children when it comes to something like this and and conversation is key. It's interesting because some parents I know, you know, they don't want to bring it up because they don't want their kids to be talking about it. But the uh. key is you really want to have this conversation. The fact that it rhymes, it's repetitive, that helps a lot. And the other thing is they're really empowering your kids when you talk about it because you're teaching them. In this book it says, you know, if it feels okay. So you want them to trust their gut. Because a lot of times kids intuitively know, but they right. are talked out of it. And that's something else that's in the book, too. And I'm the opposite of the parent who talks so much about it, and it mm -hmm. almost scares my child as opposed to really understanding. And the best part is, in the beginning, it gives directions to parents how to actually read this book to them and how to do it and how to you know keep on repeating it until it becomes really comfortable to your child. But Great job, Kate. I mean, yeah. we love, as parents here on this table, you know, we really appreciate it when someone comes up with a book like yeah. this. And I do love the rule. I love the fact that you can kind of have these concrete steps that parents can follow. Absolutely. That's, a lot of us need it. We need right, the parents manual. don't know. You right. do need an instruction manual. And, and it tells you when it's okay for somebody to look or examine, and it says the doctor, but it also gives you information about the doctor and who who can touch you where right. on your underwear. And mm -hmm. feeling empowered to say something when they're not feeling okay with it. And I think exactly. it's the best part of right. all. Exactly, absolutely. And it's a book like this that once you introduce it to your child, they'll probably go upstairs in their room or with their friends and say, oh, you know, this book, and they'll start putting it together. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, you know, I think our kids really, really listen, no matter when they say no, 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 but when they hear you say it all the time, you know, they'll go out there and remember these little words that their parents keep telling them when to feel okay, when not to feel okay. Absolutely. So it's great. And it will be ingrained in them, which Absolutely. is what we want. Right. It's uncomfortable to talk about it. Even us talking about it now, yeah. because you hate to think that it's happening, yeah. and it's so uncomfortable, and it's so important. These are one of those conversations that you can start as early, really. She as also like did two. the illustration, which was really fun. And so this just launched here in the U.S., and you can get it on Amazon. And it's, uh, she's doing it in different um, oh. dialects or oh, uh, languages. So different, oh, cultures. Cult because different cultures. Different cultures react differently and have and different, have different roles. names yeah. for you know, certain parts of the body. And mm -hmm. so it's very, very smart. Because something about she's from Australia and the Aborigines down there, or that's a whole different culture, and they sure. have different names. So... Kudos very, very cool. Yeah, I Thank love you, it. Kate. Thank you for the book. And thank you. We look forward to you know hearing what parents are thinking about this book as well. Oh, absolutely.